first one, uh, I made some kind of very general remarks about the difficulties facing uh, the authorities uh, in the current climate. And that's because in many sectors, certainly not all, uh, the pre-crisis conditions will not be a reliable counterfactual to assess mergers. Very simply, things have changed, things will change, and you've heard it so many times before, no nothing will be the same after uh, this crisis is over. And that means that the probative value of internal documents, pre-crisis business plans, even historic market shares, may be limited. Uh, and we even had a discussion about market definitions. You know, have we seen more switching between products during the crisis? And will that change uh, some of the, the market definitions that we've used in the past. But what is clear that as part of a prospective uh, analysis, the competition authorities will need to distinguish between the short-term and the long-term effects of the crisis. And this is no easy task. Uh, the perfect illustration of that is uh, Ali Olympic Aegean 1, this was the merger in 2011 between two Greek airlines. In that case, the failing firm defence was raised, but it was rejected, uh, among other things, on the basis that Greek GDP was predicted to go back again, but go back up again. Well, it didn't. It fell by 7.3% in 2012, and in three point, uh, it fell by 3.2% the following year in 2013. Uh, and of course, a couple of years after the first attempt, the parties came back with the merger to the European Commission and it was cleared on the basis of the failing firm defence. So with the wonderful benefit of hindsight, perhaps a more lenient approach would have been more efficient. Uh, but my main point in this session related to the so-called flailing firm. I think this is one area where the notifying parties will focus their energy. They will argue that the impact of the current crisis on the target firm can be and should be incorporated into the assessment of the counterfactual. And we have a very good recent precedent at European level. Uh, it's the merger between T-Mobile and Tele2. I have to declare an interest here. I was involved uh, on behalf of T-Mobile. This was a four to three pure mobile telecoms merger, which normally has regulators dashing to the medicine cabinet. Um, there was no failing firm defense that was raised. Instead, there was a kind of flailing firm defence, which partly formed the basis of the unconditional clearance. Now, it wasn't the only element. The merging parties were becoming not number one, not number two, but number three on the market. And the, the combined market shares were relatively low. But one important thing here is that even though, the, if you like, the flailing firm elements were accepted, this was a phase two investigation, and there was, in my view, ample evidence that the target would no longer be such an important competitive force going forward. So the question in my mind is on the failing firm defense, is will the time pressure uh, allow us to, to run this defence uh, successfully. And there's, again, we're coming back to the, the issue of evidence, trying to uh, establish, you know, in the, in the current environment um, or satisfy the test to the requisite standard. But I think, and I, I ended by saying that if the failing firm defence for whatever reason is not available, the parties should nonetheless not be precluded from falling back to the argument that absent the merger, 
the firm will be a lesser competitive force. In other words, the flailing firm defence. And uh, it's fairly clear from some of the indication, the guidance offered by the authorities, that it's, it's important to try and have a, 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 an argument, uh, or have a, sorry, have a discussion with the, with the authorities, it may lead to an argument, um, uh, as soon as possible in the process. Uh, so that you can determine on which path you will be treading. So, to sum up, it was a, a, an absolutely fascinating debate. Um, I think the conclusion was uh, that the failing firm defence will not be watered down and the competitive the, 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 the basic tests will remain the same. Uh, there is a need for stability in this uh, rather unstable uh, environment. One comment that struck me was that um, crises are temporary, but mergers are forever. And, and that would lead one to apply the precautionary principle, namely, if in doubt, the merger should be prohibited. Now, this obviously has a practitioner who uh, makes a living trying to get deals through. This obviously is troubling. Um, and I, I would argue that um, we, we need to you know, tread very carefully and there doesn't need to be a radical shift one way or the other uh, as, a, as a result of the, of the crisis. Um, I think that the failing firm defence uh, is probably not going to be uh, the number one favourite of the parties. After all, we've only had three or four uh, succeed at European level. We've had zero cases succeed on efficiencies. Uh, more likely is the flailing firm. But the question always will be on time uh, and, and, and evidence. And one final remark is that uh, remedies, um, which may well be offered in phase one in order to get quick uh, deals through, remedies are going to have to be flexible. Uh, probably, unless absolutely necessary, no upfront buyer. Uh, a longer time period in which to sell assets and a review clause which allows uh, flexibility in if the circumstances change. And if you look at the WHO's uh, communications uh, about a possible second peak, uh, we just don't know how this crisis is going to evolve. Experts, investment bankers, their views differ on whether this is a, a U-shaped, a V-shaped, a L-shaped, a W-shaped uh, recovery. Uh, so we need to be nimble uh, uh, and flexible. Great debate, really fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you.